if you guys are just joining us, uh, far from watch my video, uh, my video, basically, if you guys don't know, it's, uh, the one where I quit Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I don't stream Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. I've decided that I hate Yu-Gi-Oh, and, uh, obviously a lot of people were not very happy with that. Uh, this is the first video I posted, by the way, that actually got me negative subscribers. <laughs> I've never had, like, negative subscribers um, for any video that I've posted. Uh, it didn't uh, leave it with overall net negative, though. Uh, actually, I gained subscribers from it. But uh, as it was, like, updating, I was just watching, like, I myself lose subs. Which is fair, because I'm no longer going to be streaming, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! But, you know, <laughs> it's funny. It's definitely really funny. All right, let's go ahead, start the video, and see. Uh, here's a, here's a content creator for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel that has officially quit the game. <laughs> Not exactly the uh, biggest content creator or anything. It's a nice little VTuber here, but I thought it was very interesting to get this perspective. Okay. Uh, from someone that actually decided to dedicate time and effort into creating content for the game. Actually starting up and building towards playing Yu-Gi-Oh! as a full-time, uh, well, I don't know about full-time, but as a content creator. And then it's just like, just straight up, just, I'm going to quit the game. Yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't new to my channel, I mean, that's pretty much all I've done. <laughs> I've done a lot of, like, React stuff uh, there, but, like, just starting off this channel, uh, I've only made, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And uh, I've started off making guides. Uh, I go over my background over there, so, I mean, it's definitely not the best thing I could have done for myself, but... Uh, it's, it's the only thing that made sense to me, so. So I'm curious to see what the, uh, points made here are. I'm gonna 1.25 this. Maybe 1.5 it. Right here. Speaks low enough. Let's go ahead and talk about why I'm done streaming Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Now, if you're new to my channel, oh, seven. let me go ahead and contextualize my oh, position seven. and where I'm coming from. Okay, I'm gonna move now. Master Duel I wish I had the bravery the to quit. ...to ever happen to my YouTube channel, and overall to my success as a live streamer and content creator. Okay, we I quintupled our sub numbers, that's guides, cool. And I leveraged the viewership and success of those guides in order to branch out into... Jesus Christ. Platinum Dragon Maid Guide. Platinum Striker Guide. Bro, I've been making the wrong kind of content here. Why is it 55 minutes long? No one needs a 55 minute guide <laughs> on how to summon Heratic Seal. What I really enjoy doing, which is the live Wait. stream. And <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's not. So for the Dragon Maid guide, I I went a little ham on it. <laughs> I did a lot of research and I, I tried to look up other combos and how other people were playing it. And basically what I looked up were a lot of plays and like some spreadsheets of Dragon Maid being played uh, pretty much like a like a worse Dragon Link deck, right? They even had like Pisty and one of the other uh, Gardrigan cards that got banned, and it was it looked really interesting. So that's like what I used for the most part as like a basis for for this video. Um, definitely, definitely was a lot more detailed and had a lot more combos than needed, but uh, it was fun. It was definitely fun to make. Here, why is it fifty five minutes long? No one needs a fifty five minute guide on how to summon Heratic Seal. What I really enjoy doing, which is oh, the live stream. We're not going to speed this up. I was able to make those guides because I have, at the very least, a competent level of knowledge about Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I played a lot of it back in 2014 at a level that at least saw me and my group of friends regularly attend locals and regional events for about a year or two. I quit the game. If you can play 2014 Yu-Gi-Oh at like a competent level, you can probably jump into modern Yu-Gi-Oh because that's kind of where that old school, new school vibe kind of... Uh, starts off and i was gonna like actually yeah. make like a separate video on this thing talking about how Yu-Gi-Oh's like skill floor has like dramatically increased over the years and generations but 2014 specifically like that's probably where like old school new school like divide starts came at the time since the cost was high i mean and my friends uh, out of it only to find myself where where i came in for Yu-Gi-Oh, just to contextualize it a little more is basically over here right here where Fire and Water. Uh, basically, the best deck at the time was Fire Fist. A lot of people were playing Mermails, right? Uh, Infernity has some pretty degenerate combos. Bujin was just coming out. I played for a good bit. I played for probably until um, Pepe. Until Pepe was a thing. And then I definitely fell off. But then again, I don't know. It says Draco Zoo. Did Zodiac re like get popular later? I don't know, but that's basically where I came into Yu-Gi-Oh. It was right after Dragon Rollers. Dragon Rollers versus uh, Spellbooks 
was probably considered to be one of the most degenerate matchups and degenerate formats um, for a while. And I joined right after with my friends. So in 2022, upon Master Duel's release, making a guide for a deck that I genuinely enjoyed learning and playing, which is Sky Strikers. I so we're going to have a red flag warning pop up because <laughs> in a 28 minute video, you can probably find that there's going to be red flags. This right here. This is a red flag, okay? We've given the benefit this? of the doubt, but that this is a red flag. I've oh, been streaming no. Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel ever since for the better part of two years now, and I'm absolutely sick of it. So this video <laughs> is not only going to be a post-mortem and... I am absolutely sick of it. <laughs> ...an explanation to my community on why I'm no longer going to stream their favorite game, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and spice it up a bit for anyone just peeping their head in and explain to you why I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is Why do YouTubers move so much? Is this normal? Out there. To first explain why Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel sucks, we have to talk about the <laughs> Okay, the bluntness, I gotta appreciate. Here is why Master Duel sucks. Okay, all right. Let issue, cook. Which is, why does Yu-Gi-Oh! Dude, suck? why can't I just, like, press pa like press spacebar to pause? But, yes, I, I, I mean, it has to be a pretty big claim, right? Otherwise, you're just gonna click off the video. And I, I, I genuinely do believe that Master Duel sucks. Master Duel, specifically. Yu-Gi-Oh! is okay. Especially like the older formats, but um, Master Duel is pretty bad. And why Master Duel with- Oh, you can't show the Christian Urena Shangri-Ra game. No, you can. All of its opportunity and potential to remedy it fails to do so. <laughs> now, again, I'm not turn. a casual level player like Papa Mutt over here. Look at this Simply turn. trying to get a rise out of the community as someone with a casual level of experience with the game. I know how this game works. I play it a lot. And my brand of content largely revolves around playing Master Duel. Okay, so uh, admittedly, uh, some of the criticisms that get lodged at Yu-Gi-Oh generally come from like Yu-Gi boomers who are like, you know, the same old script as 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 always. Uh, wow, um, uh, card text too long. Um, uh, Yu-Gi uh, season zero very dark and evil. He is a <laughs> psychopath. He is the average fo Florida man, etc. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like that's basically where ninety percent of Yu-Gi-Oh is like. YouTube content comes from in terms of the critiques of the game, but this is from someone who's actually actually really good at the game. So it'll be interesting to see what they say about this. Master Duel. I mean, I'm decent enough, right? I, I get I can get Master One. That's that's okay. Well, <laughs> in at the very least, a competent level, competent enough to be able to reach Master One with meta and rogue decks like Sky Strikers whenever I'd like. The first reason why I think Yu-Gi-Oh is the worst card game out there is because of its <laughs> overabundance. Boy, so, like, I love the blood. <laughs> reason number one why Yu-Gi-Oh is the worst card game <laughs> of mechanics. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of mechanics. On top of all these super and subtypes of cards, there is a shameless bias for cards with more and more text that has only grown over the years. This creates a lot of bloat. For anyone who hasn't seen this graph, by the way, this is average word count of Yu-Gi-Oh card text by year. <laughs> uh, which is really crazy to see that even early Yu-Gi-Oh still had like 30 plus words on the card text. <laughs> like even early Yu-Gi-Oh, like early Yu-Gi-Oh still had like 30 plus card, uh, 30 plus words on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of this stuff is like, it's a lot of information to take in. Now, admittedly, a lot of it is kind of fluff and a lot of it is like a lot that you'll never really need to know. Um, like you're never... If you jump into Yu-Gi-Oh! today, hmm? you can probably get away with never learning what Gemini is. You can probably get away with never learning what Pendulum is, unironically. I, I don't say that to trash on Pendulum and Pen players, but there are there is a genuine like pocket of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! players today who never learned what Pendulum summoning does, and they never did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the fun thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! is that you can kind of stay in your box because there are so many mechanics and the archetypes are designed around these mechanics, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of good mechanical theming, and we'll probably talk about that a little later, um, in that they, the, the archetypes that they make definitely have a theme, and they follow it, and they do very well in, in just keeping to that. But this is average word count of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s card text by year. It's not necessarily like, uh, like addition of mechanics, right? All the cards are getting more and more text. It's, it is getting more and more convoluted. There are so many cards with, like, you know, chat likes to say, hidden effects, right? Effects that were, like, don't ever see the light of day until they actually do, right? And it's just, it, it doesn't, it's so weird because there are a lot of cards. I, I wish I had some examples. I probably should have thought of some examples before watching this video. But there are so many cards where it's like, oh, here, I, I have 
I have a perfect example. There's a card like this, right? Curry card, Div Incarnate. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be special summon from your hand by tributing all face up monsters on the field that activated their effects this turn in your opponent's monster zone. So you just read this and you're like, okay, crazy. That's that's awesome. It gains 1500 attack for each monster tributed to special summon this card. That's great too. That's this this card's a mega kaiju, right? This card's a crazy kaiju. And then like at the end, it's like during your end phase, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon it to your field, by the way. It's like, why? Why? This this was already good. This was already, like, fine. It, it was okay. It's a niche card that can be used in a wide variety of applications, and it has very good, like, destructive effects to just blow out the enemy's board. And then it just, for, for whatever reason, it just gains you advantage slowly over time. It's like, oh, okay, sure, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> it's like, there's there are so many cards. Um, This is probably, like... Maybe one of the the lesser as far as like hidden effects, but a lot of cards just have are so overloaded with text and effects, and it just feels like it's weird. It's just why? Why do we have to do that? Because waifu read true. Because waifu. <laughs> That's the only valid reason. So there is a lot of fluff, you know, like union. You're probably never gonna need to know that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but he's absolutely right. Like, in terms of, like, jumping into the game today, now where we are, like, the card text, the influx of um, just so much stuff there is, the learning curve, the skill floor, which maybe he'll touch on later, but the learning curve for Yu-Gi-Oh! is astronomical. Uh, I still, like, you know, don't know, like, certain rulings and certain, like, PSCT interactions that I played this game competitively mm -hmm. for, like, nine years. Um, and I'll still, like, trip up and mess up how A into B or uh, A also does B, you know, mixes up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's right. There is a lot of information. Four cards with more and more text that has only grown over the years. Even pro players like Pack TCG, a two-time Yu-Gi-Oh! champion and consistent top placer at... A Cheater! Official <laughs> community events was... A Ch Cheat Cheeto. Someone find the clip. Someone find the clip real quick. Real quick, real quick. <laughs> Hang on, this is very important. This is very important. Cheeto? I've never heard this meme. <laughs> Where is it? Josh, I need this. Effect of... Oh my god, wait, is that XQC? And Turpin's gonna special summon to the field. Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> wait, who is that? That is XQC, right? Okay, sorry. Anyway, let's continue. Accused of cheating by the Yu-Gi-Oh community at a major Yu-Gi-Oh event just <laughs> Go yesterday to clip. from the time I'm recording this for making a misplay that was only later caught by the official judges. For instance, trap cards are practically irrelevant in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. There's a really good video that explains this by Key Yu-Gi-Oh that I can refer you to, but basically because trap cards are cards That's some that react content right there. has been set for one turn on your turn, they are too slow. Wait a minute. He should... He hasn't seen like Ki Yu Gi Oh videos. He should see Ki Yu Gi Oh videos. Ki Yu Gi Oh videos are fire. If you guys want uh, a nice Yu Gi Oh content creator that talks about Yu Gi Oh, uh, he doesn't he he doesn't shit on the game. He actually likes the game. Obviously, if you guys want to watch someone who has like some really cool discussion videos, just outlining like the ridiculousness of Yu Gi Oh, uh, I definitely highly suggest him. He he edits his videos very well, and they that's good react content, uh, as he says. <laughs> Or just wait for him to react to it, I guess. The only... Uh, They're Chad, not He's long. not wrong. Like, some of you guys are like... Like, y you guys seem to always... Uh, whenever someone makes a point, you, like, completely miss, like, the greater picture of the point being said. There was a time in Yu-Gi-Oh! where every single deck in the game would play, like, a powerful trap card. Combo decks would play, like, a copy of Mirror Force. Yeah. Combo decks, like, actual combo decks would play, like, Solemn Judgment or something. Like, that was a period of time in Yu-Gi-Oh! Nowadays, you, no deck in the game plays trap cards. And before you say infinite impermanence, that's a very niche, unique type of card. Let's be real, that's a hand trap. It might as well just be a monster. Um, you can point to like, oh, Labyrinth or something like that. But understand that the Labyrinth cards are the good cards there in that, in that deck. And on top of that, the good trap cards are searchable, which makes it significantly stronger. And on top of that, the best Labyrinth trap card is a Floodgate. <laughs> <laughs> Dimensional Barrier. Um, so, yes, while a trap deck that is somewhat in the meta, it, not enough, by the way, it's had, like, one or two tops, like, per event this whole year, um, 
what you can name one deck but remember the point is it's like there was a time in Yu-Gi-Oh genuinely where you would play trap cards even in non uh, even in combo decks because combo decks still took Ding time dong. to set up their combo you still had to draw into your combo you still had to get the right pieces together then you could like set up your thing trap cards are for the most part you would never really as a as a as a random like just playing any deck in the game you would never look at a good trap card and be like okay I'm going to play this in my deck like solemn strike for example mm -hmm. how many decks play solemn strike right now today uh, Labyrinth at an absolute stretch, maybe we'll play Solemn Strike, right? A card like Solemn Strike, like, printed, like, 15 years ago would be stapled three of in every deck in the game. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it is uh, it is true. Yeah, and I am going to explain this a little later, um, and so we'll, we'll watch me explain that. But what I wanted to add on to that, because I was getting a lot of people um, commenting on my video, obviously, that, oh, trap cards were always bad. Trap cards were always bad. Do you guys know how I understand that trap cards were usable? It's because when I fucking played the game, it was meta. Fire Fist, biggest deck. You have a whole row over here dedicated to fucking trap cards. Bottomless, Solemn Warning, three Fiendish Chains, one Torrential Tribute, two Mirror Forces, two Dimensional Prison, Black Horn of Heaven. They played Black Horn of Heaven. And after that, Gear Gia. Look at this deck. Half of it is traps. Do you guys even know what this card is, Fiendish Chain? This is basically old infinite impermanence. This is re like negate uh, monster's effects. It's a continuous trap, right? And people played this and they also played MSTs to get rid of Fiendish Chain because if it's gone, then you're no longer negating a monster's effects. I've played this game and people have been saying like, oh, like traps were never good. This guy, they're playing seven tools of the bandit. Seven Tools of the Bandit literally is just a, a counter trap card to stop trap cards. Like, <laughs> people are saying like, oh, like, I've, I, I, I have, I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! Or like, I, I'm just coming out of nowhere from this angle. But like, that's literally how the game was played. Because the reason why trap cards were good back then is because games didn't, on average... Uh, end within four or five turns. I think that's technically the number is four or five turns. Um, but realistically, you see a lot of games end within around the fourth turn, right? First, if if the second player uh, does manage to like fight back against the first turn, then they're going to win on turn four, right? And first turn player has to deal damage on turn three. So that's, I mean, like, I, I've played this game. You cannot, like, <laughs> you cannot tell me this. There is hat format too. It's like, Every comment over there, right? I've been reading them. They're talking about how, like, oh, Labyrinth exists. Trap tricks exist. Yeah, of course these exist. And yeah, of course you play trap cards in them. Because those are archetypes literally made to solve the problem that trap cards are essentially just, like, a, a, a mechanical, like, flavor, essentially. It's, like, it's a theme. It's a theme of a deck. It's not... It's been reduced to being just a theme of a deck rather than an actual, like, legit card type that you play. Right, and the only card type, the only trap card you play in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, right, is literally just a trap card that doesn't play like a trap card. It literally just breaks the rules of what a trap card is. So, that's, I mean, to me, that's just, I think it says a lot. So I'm sorry, was huge for its time, and it's released in the same format as Tier Zero Pepe. Yeah, Phoenix Chain so good. Uh, 2014 15 Solomon targeted deck uh, negates were one fourth of deck building. Yeah, they were. It was good when Yu Gi Oh was a grand game. Like, you definitely had more turns than four or five. <laughs> so, all right, let's let's continue though. I mean, that that's what I want to add on. I'm gonna explain with the infinite permanence, but you know. Anyway, the trap cards you see being played are either archetype specific trap cards that do so much for that particular archetype, or cards that literally change how trap cards work like Infinite Impermanence, which is a trap card that negates monster effects and can be activated from your hand if you control no other cards on the field, bypassing a trap card's restriction and thus its identity entirely. This is like the first hand trap that's actually a trap card, by the way. <laughs> and that is not the first. Okay, I don't know. Because I I, I took a long hiatus, obviously, with Yu-Gi-Oh! But this is like one of the most effective like hand traps that's actually a trap card, which I think is so funny that you have like all these monsters that are hand traps, but not trap cards. 
And if it's not Dynamorbi those trap oh, cards yeah, that's that being played, really then the trap good, cards bro. are likely only being used by specific archetypes like Labyrinth or Trap Tricks, who are designed with mechanics that explicitly enhance a trap card's performance. Labyrinth Ku Clock, for example, allows you to activate a normal trap card the turn it was set, as opposed to waiting. Like, just think about the concept and the theme of Ku Clock. This card was printed and designed so that it could let you use traps on the turn they're set, because that's how bad trap cards are. They had to like make cards that make the card make trap cards like playable. Like they had to design an entire archetype around trap cards being good because of how bad trap cards are. They had to build an archetype that searches trap cards and recycles trap cards and lets you use them from turn one <laughs> in order for this deck to be playable. In order for this deck to be competitive and viable. And even then, you could argue that Labyrinth has not been the meta threat that it probably maybe should have been, right? Like that's how bad trap cards are. Anyway, I don't know what really the point is to be fixating on this is probably just to really sort of iterate just how fast and the speed of the game um, has developed, right? Waiting a turn, making it practically a spell card. And I wanted to start with this example. Why would your matchup against a dominant archetype like Pirelli feel any different game by game if Pirelli has... This video deserves a dislike and a downvote just because he said Pirelli. Um... <laughs> Anyway, the um, biggest... Uh... That's how it's spelled, dude. What the fuck? What do you mean? That's how it's spelled. I I, I say purely, but like, it, I, I want it to be a little more, I don't know. I want it to be a little more, I don't know, like, by the book. I don't know. It's, that's how it's spelled. Calls of power creep that I've sort of managed to really notice over the years. Um, I think is generally been the link between the main deck, the extra deck, and back to the main deck. Now, what I mean by this is back in the day, quote unquote, yeah, sure, for carbon, get over here and lie down and take your pills. Back in the day, a combo deck wouldn't really interact that much with the main deck and then back to the main deck. De games, even with combo decks like Insectors, like Teledad, sometimes felt very different. You had like the general gameplay loop of like make like a level eight, for example, uh, in Teledad, but that level eight you make doesn't get you in back into your main deck to do more stuff. I never played Teledad, but I mean, yeah, obviously, Dark Arm Dragon just pops shit on the field, right? You don't like the the funny thing about modern Yu Gi Oh. Um, and it's funny because one person in chat came in came in and were, was like, "I'm scared to play modern Yu Gi Oh because of all the searching and shuffling I would have to do IRL." And I'm like, "Well, you basically just tell your opponent I'm going back in, and then you shuffle before you draw." That's all you have to really do because that's what that's normally what you would do playing in um you know in real life Yu-Gi-Oh. You would just say oh, no, I'm going back in there. Uh, I'll, I'll shuffle after. And you just make you just make sure that they shuffle. That's pretty much it. So an example of this of power creep is that when you have main deck starter cards that get you to extra deck monsters that then get you more resources from your deck, mm -hmm. what that does is that it creates a gameplay loop of every single game feeling very similar to one another kind of like how he's describing so the variance and the fun in Yu-Gi-Oh um is a very good point that i haven't really thought about that he's brought up just now is kind of true games feel very similar today because you have combos that are very like linear um they work the same way right and because that's the best decks the best decks need to be consistent the best decks need to be able to do the same thing over and over and everyone loves everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh loves consistency of course you love consistency because consistency is power but no other card game does this no other card game including rush duel rush duel if you want to look at like modern rush duel card design rush card io you could look at any rush duel card right it's all of konami just making up for their mistakes. Nothing searches your decks. Nothing. Nothing searches your deck in Rush Duel. Nothing goes into your deck and just pulls out a, a, a fucking card. Absolutely nothing, okay? Everything uses your graveyard as a resource that you build. They, they mill to the graveyard, and so there's variance. There's still um, a luck element involved in it because it's a card game. Card games are... They're not fighting games, right? If you want to play a really consistent game, a PvP player game, play a fucking fighting game, right? That's that's not what card games are. Card games is all, all about there is luck, there is variance, and there is skill in managing variance, in in contending with variance as an enemy, right? Variance is supposed to be something that you are trying to mitigate, but this is non-existent in pr practically non-existent in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Because modern Yu-Gi-Oh! 
the variance is just who cares? It's, we don't. Our players don't like variance, so we're not gonna give them variance, right? The only variance there is in Yu-Gi-Oh, there is variance in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Are things you cannot mitigate, which is your opening draw, or whether you go first or second, or just what you top deck, I guess, right? There is variance, but it's so minimal. It's so minimalized. And for me, that's just not very fun. I I play so many other card games and they don't always play out the exact same way. There's more multiple turns. Um, you don't just go dive into your deck time and time and time and again. And that's, I mean, that's a preference thing. I get it. But Yu-Gi-Oh is so unique. So uniquely designed. This is an only Yu-Gi-Oh thing. That don't really have. Just don't tell anyone. Sort of... Okay. Just don't tell anyone about Demonic T Tutor and um, Vampiric Tutor. These cards are only like playable in uh, Commander. <laughs> Demonic Tutor is Commander, pretty much only. I think it's banned in Legacy. It's banned in Historic. They don't make these cards, and these cards cost something. Is another thing, right? Sure, Vintage. These cards cost something though. They cost two mana, right? That's not the same. That's not the same as I summon uh, Pirelli and I get to uh, get my friend Pirelli. My friend Pirelli gets to give me any memory and my memory is able to special summon a Pirelli. It's th that's not nearly the same thing. Tutors are fine um, in a game of magic and even then they limit themselves from making um, these tutors, right? Um, they're okay in, the, in this context because there's a cost associated with it besides just the card that you play. So it's not nearly the same thing. It's not nearly the same thing. Is intuition a fine card? What's intuition? Is this a magic card? Are we going down this rabbit hole? Intuition. Legacy Vintage Commander. Instant. Search your library for three cards and reveal them. Target opponent chooses one. Put that card into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, then shuffle. Okay, so this is basically like my friend Pirelli, except it's generic. Okay, sure. Three cost. Instant. I don't like Legacy. I don't like Vintage. I'll be honest. It's kind of has similar problems to Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but that being said, I don't know. Is this meta? It seems like it's doing... It's pretty expensive. <laughs> is is Vintage like a singleton format at all? I hate Legacy. I don't know. For me, um, I don't play these formats, right? I usually just play Standard. Um, Pioneer Modern would be... Modern Wood is similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it has a huge card pool, right? But uh, my the main format I do like in Magic is Draft. I think these kind of legacy vintage formats where you have like just poorly designed cards. I mean, the, the reason why these form these formats exist is because these cards, like cards like this, do suck. They are toxic to the game. So, I mean, <laughs> people don't like to play with these cards. And that's just, that includes me. Of, uh, because because of how consistent the decks are now, because of how Jesus. fast the game is, oh, the decks need to be consistent. And the best way to get um, consistency is the power creep of the card design, which is, here's a main deck starter card. This allows you to go into this Link 2 monster. This Link 2 monster then gets you this search from your main deck. And there are so many decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! that play in that exact same flow that there is no difference between a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! duels. A lot of duels feel so formulaic and feel so similar to one another. Um... You know, True. unlike something like a draft mode in Yu-Gi-Oh, which I think is really great. And this is not to criticize Yu-Gi-Oh as a game by itself. This is obviously just the current standard format that we have today of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is cut, advanced, constructed, and for some reason that seems to be the only best way to play it. If you play a game like Edison, you'll notice the difference. You can play a mirror match in Edison. You can play like a game in uh, a match in, in Edison. You can play a best of 10 in Edison, and every game feels really different. It does. And I feel like right before I made this video, um, what I watched was Farfa playing Edison. And uh, apparently Farfa says, not Farfa, <laughs> Raran. Uh, not Farfa, Raran. If you guys want to see like how Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, what used to be played, right? This is a very good feature match. Uh, there's two of them. There's two feature matches in here with Simo and Raran. Simo is showing Raran how to play Edison because Raran had a bad experience with Master Duel. And these games are really fun. They're really fun and interesting to watch, right? Um, and you can tell, like, if you played this game or if you watched people who actually knew how to play this format play it, 
that it would be interesting. There are is like things you wait for. There are outs that you have, and nothing is decided within the first few turns. So this is um this is a a version of Yu-Gi-Oh that I feel like a, a lot of modern Yu-Gi-Oh players just have never seen. It's totally and completely foreign to them, and I I definitely prefer this type of Yu-Gi-Oh more. It's not the Yu-Gi-Oh I grew up with, but I mean, I've played with Blackwing cards and um, this is more closer to the speed of Yu-Gi-Oh that I played when I started out playing Yu-Gi-Oh. So. He ended up not liking it anyway. I, I mean, I don't know. He said over here that uh, he, for his criticisms on it, that he did uh, like it a lot better than Master Duel. And I think that says a lot because he hated Master Duel. So. Uh, at least in the end of this video, my impression was that he enjoyed himself, especially when uh, Simo was teaching him. But uh, yeah, I mean, maybe he, later on he said that he didn't like it, and that's that's fine because it's still like it's still Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But yeah. But if you play like a best of ten in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, they feel very similar. Um, and I suppose that's is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? I don't know. What is draft? Uh, it's when a preference. You just pick like <laughs> what is draft? <laughs> What is draft, man? Fuck, man. Uh. Random cards out of a set card pool. Three cards that can search for 12 cards that can perform the same function, like Dark Ruler No More. A spell card that not only wipes all the card text and effects from your opponent's monsters, rendering them useless, but explicitly states that it cannot be responded to by the most conventional means. Because of Yu-Gi-Oh's card design. This is wild that a card like Dark Ruler had to be printed and it's like not even like you know, a staple, like, three of card in, like, every side deck, which is, like, hilarious to me. It's not a staple anymore, but at least a few formats... I don't know. I, I, I still look at Yu-Gi-Oh! top decks, and I was looking at um, cards as an example for TCG, because I wanted this video to relate to TCG as well as Master Duel. Um, and it's still played. Uh, it's still played. It's not a automatic include, for sure, but it's still played a lot. I just, and if it's not Dark Ruler no more, then it's other cards that, you know are essentially able to invalidate the opponent's turn. You read Dark Ruler no more, and you think to yourself, like, this is the most broken card ever printed, and it's like not even like a staple. It's like, that's how good the decks not are. Now. A lot of its gameplay loops thus feel very binary. There is no point in thinking about turns four and on when everything that matters is right in front of you. This means there is no sense of tempo. There are no in-game Oh my god, all the no toast. Strategy. Everything <laughs> happens at a breakneck pace, and so many things are inherently unfair by being uninteractable, which reduces the number of meaningful decisions you make in a game. The final thing I will say that bothers me the most about Yu-Gi-Oh! is its lack of flavor. And I know that sounds weird. The uh, the main uh, takeaway, really, I think, from that body of arguments there is pretty much just, like, the speed of the game, right? And because the game is so fast and so consistent, um, the combos are all very similar as e uh, to one another. And because of that, every game feels very formulaic and similar. So I, uh, I, I respect and understand the uh, criticisms here, and it's not for everyone. And I guess that's obviously why he quit. Um, why is Yu-Gi-Oh not Hearthstone? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, you could argue that, like, why is a uh, card game different from other card game? But, you know, for... Clearly... Why is card game different from every other card game? Which is fine. Like, don't let me knock down, like, whatever you like. Yu-Gi-Oh is fine, but there are reasons why you like it. And it's, you know... it It's rooted in degeneracy and toxicity, which is also fine. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to be toxic, right? And that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is inherently. A lot of people, and if it was untrue, they would have they would be playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Otherwise, they wouldn't be playing other card games. That is a massive uh, drawback of the game. Because here's the thing, people don't uh, need to remember: Yu-Gi-Oh has the potential to feel very uh, not formulaic, very different. It does. Uh, every game has the potential to feel like unique in that way. And but it it feels like. Yu-Gi-Oh can feel that way because Yu-Gi-Oh has felt that way, right? Uh, back in 2014 when I played it, Edison format, right? And it, it has felt that way, and it, so it could, but it's kind of hard now. Can you really imagine Konami just like, okay, let's reset the game, right? Let's reset the, oh, let's just ban every like modern archetype. We're going to change our entire card design, guys, and... Uh, uh, Fuck link summoning, pendulum summoning. We're not doing that anymore. It's you can only play with the, no, like that's just not gonna happen, right? You're not gonna rewrite 
your entire design philosophy, especially when people still buy it. People still like this game for what it is, and that's fine. It's just really different. And I don't. And the biggest proof of that is you just play any old school format. Uh, I've played so much GOAT format. A couple years ago, I was just like had this GOAT phase. I've played so much GOAT format. And every game feels very different. Every set card that they have could be a bluff. It could be a good knock target. The top mm -hmm. decks are different. The cards they draw are unique. Uh, there's no real setup of main combos and stuff like that because every board state and every game it looks very different to one another because the way you draw your cards is different at any one time. I saw a comment that says Hearthstone players would rather play Yu-Gi-Oh, not gonna lie, not Raran. Fine, <laughs> compared to modern Yu-Gi-Oh, whereas all the cards that you want, you can usually access immediately, turn one, if you've opened the right two-three card combo, etc., which is very possible because you have 12 starters and five, ext uh, five, that's an understatement, like 10 extenders and 10 defensive cards to stop your opponent from doing their combo, you know? So that's like the main criticism is that um, he finds it very formulaic, uh, which is, you know, a very uh, reasonable way to look at the game. Weird if you don't come from card games, but let me explain. In Magic the Gathering, you, the player, are a planeswalker. It's very clear that it is a conscious design decision and it basically doesn't exist in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is... Okay, that is uh, definitely not true. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh archetypes are actually very cool at um, playing in the way that they are thematically supposed to be uh, represented, right? A good example of this that I was uh, okay. you know, told by um, once upon a time is uh, dangers are a very good, cool aspect of taking a theme and making it mechanics, right? And there's a Okay, let's see where this is going. Danger is like the the mechanic, the... The deck where it says, oh, activate from hand, uh, discard a card randomly, and if you discard this card, I think special summon it, right? Or do something wacky with your deck, okay? A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, archetypes and decks that work mechanically how they're themed. Um, for example, like the danger monsters, they are, you know, they're, there's a lot of these like mythological creatures that have never been seen before, like the Bigfoot, etc. Cetera, et cetera, right? cool. So yeah. you reveal a danger from your hand, it comes out and it shows itself and then it hides again. And then your opponent has to pick a card from your hand. Okay. Right? That's a very basic, simple example of how, like, the dangers work. And mm -hmm. theme to um, what they're based off of, lore-wise, etc. Let's et cetera. go. Uh, at Emancipator, excavates cards from the top of your deck. It's a deck of little miners. And the mi that came out wrong. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mining <laughs> as in, like, the, uh, the profession of, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That, that, that was that was that was that was a sentence. They mine things, right? So they work in the mines and they excavate rocks and precious gems. And you excavate five and then you special summon a gem, right? Like that's that's like the theme. So there is a thousand examples of this in Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm sure uh, I I could think about more if I sat and really thought about it. But anyway, uh, that's just a simply untrue. Jesus like what he's saying right now. Gross. That that is just not true. Yu-Gi-Oh has plenty of examples of cards that work based off of their lore and theme. I will... Okay, so I, I will give that to Yu-Gi-Oh! I will give that to Farfa, and I think even Dual Logs um, commented on my video and mentioned to me um, Springins, um, or Spriggins. I don't know exactly how you say it. But I think there is a fundamental difference. Um, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! has very strong mechanical theming. Okay. They will have an archetype, and that archetype will follow this mechanical theme. Pirelli will stick memories underneath the big exceed monsters, a bunch of material under them, right? Uh, Kashtira banishes things face down, right? Th this is clear. This is obvious, and you have the danger stuff too. Um, they hide and, and whatever. But the mechanical theming, while the mechanical theming for archetypes are strong, I don't think the theming or the flavor, the mechanical flavor for individual cards are as strong as other games. That's that's where my my like position on that is. Right? Like Div Incarnate, uh Div Incarnate, uh Curry Card Div Incarnate, why is she reviving monsters from the graveyard, right? Or doing all of this. I wish I had a little more um some better examples, but as far as the examples that I brought up in Magic, right? Uh, with the Library Larcenist, you attack the player, they, you draw a card. He's basically stealing cards from the opponent's library. There there are a lot more flavorful mechanics within each card in Magic. 
Ginger Brute, you're eating him. I don't think this exists in Yu-Gi-Oh. There's nothing that you can point out to me and say for, let's say, Kashira, right? For the Kashira archetype, um, that tells me like why Unicorn is searching you a spell, right? Uh, why is Ogre searching you a trap card? Shouldn't he be like really big, bulky, and powerful, and like smack the shit out of you? I don't, I don't get it. What, what, what is, what is the trap? Why is it adding a trap card? Um, let's say over here. Okay, so it's searching what? It could either search Big Bang or Preparations. Do are these like? Is Ogre featured in the art here? What is Big Bang? What is Big Bang? They're fighting each other. Okay, and they're gonna. It's gonna banish everyone on the field, but only if they have a Kestira Exceed monster. It it all it, for me. Yu Gi Oh cards are all just purely mechanical. They have really fun, cool artwork in them, and sometimes they're they are flavorful, but they don't tell me a story at all or evoke any sort of um, like. Oh, I get why this card does that. I get why the art why the art is this way. Right? It's just it's just th this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand personally. If you go where a flavor would be savory, more nebulous and arbitrary than Magic's obvious sweet flavors printed directly on the card. I think so too. And I'm not talking about flavor text either. Like some people were thinking I was talking about uh flavor text. I'm just saying like why why is Riseheart special summoning himself from the hand and then he's banishing a Kestura card from your deck and he's banishing the top three cards of your opponent's deck face down. It doesn't make any sense to me. Level seven, there's no like story being told here. It's just a guy with a ponytail who's who looks really cool. I I I don't know the Yu-Gi-Oh lore, but I don't think there's a lot of, of lore that kind of explains this. Danger Nessie. Okay, danger. Danger has good um you know flavor, right? Let's see. You can reveal this card in your hand. Your opponent randomly chooses one card from your entire hand. Discard the card. That's just a danger mechanic. And again, I think archetypes have good mechanical theming. I think uh, Konami has very good design for archetypes that fit a certain mechanical theme. Where okay, you discard and you reveal and you discard any like a random card essentially. So, okay, if the danger, if the discard card was not danger, Nessie, special summon one danger, Nessie, from your hand. And if you do, draw one card. And if it was discarded, so I guess you found Nessie, then you can add one danger card from your deck to your hand. Why is Nessie fetching you a card? I don't, why is Nessie the one fetching you a card? I, for me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, because ogres are stupid, and he's stupid enough to add a trap card. <laughs> Ogre is security. Unicorn is a soldier, and Fenrir is reconnaissance. I only know this from master guides and card arts. Okay, sure, he's a scout. But is there a reason why Fenrir is able to search for himself too, and why other cards that search for monsters, um, or whatever, can only can search for anything that's not themselves? Why is Fenrir so good? Why is Fenrir such a such a crazy card? I don't know. For me personally, it just doesn't. the 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 equivalence isn't there. If you go uh, into any like magic, I'm gonna pull a random card. It's gonna be totally not telling me what what it is. War Chief Giant Haste Myriad. Whenever this creature attacks for each opponent, um, other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control. I mean, the art tells me the effect. Apparently, this is a giant that does have this effect to, I guess, multiply himself. And he's big, right? He attacks. I don't know. Like, it's not it's not the strongest, but the art does tell you the effect. I would say. Whereas I don't I don't see I don't see why Big Bang's this way. I don't see why preparation is this way. Special summon one of your Kestira monsters that is banished. Is this the guy that's banished? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway let's uh continue uh anyway um <laughs> excavate rocks and now i have an apollosa why is alibur a dragon i don't know what this take is i don't know anything about branded lore um that applies to runic as well every time i see a, a fountain i know i'm in danger that's that's terminally online uh that is a terminally online take dream shut up 
almost purely mechanical and Dyer gifted a Why can Kestira Fenrir search for any Kestira <laughs> monster, Dyer isn't subbed to herself, but gifted a subbed to dream. cards that search okay. for cards are unable to do. What about E purely happiness tells you that it is more adept at fetching any sort of Purelli card from your deck after attacking, or that it can have the attack of a monster on the field after doing so? Why can Bishul Magnamut can search for any dragon monster and none of his sibling cards can? Flavor isn't totally non-existent in Yu-Gi-Oh, of course, and magic isn't without stale cards. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, Flavor is clearly playing third or fourth fiddle. And it makes sense why. Yu-Gi-Oh is plagued with a group. I mean, I suppose to some extent in Yu-Gi-Oh, you don't notice the the, the, the theme of uh, a lot of the cards. And a lot of people are, I'm looking at the comments, a lot of people are disagreeing with me on this. And maybe it's because I didn't explain myself properly. I'm thinking this is probably like my next topic as far as a discussion video goes in terms of flavor and comparing it to other card games. I don't, I think there is a very clear divide. I think there's a very clear dis disparity between uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and other card games in terms of mechanical um, flavor. And I, I, I am going, I'm going to, that's my next research topic. Stuff like that because of like the pace of the game, there isn't really time to sort of appreciate it. But 100% Yu-Gi-Oh! has like plenty of cards that work thematically exactly how they are mechanically built and uh, mechanically designed. Gross amount of power creep. Good cards need to do a lot of things. And how can you express all this card text succinctly in just one art piece? Magic the Gathering cards, in contrast, can remain relatively simple in design because power creep isn't nearly as present thanks to its standard rotating format. A simple design is more easily conveyed through a single art piece, and thus magic generally... At this point, it really is just kind of boiling down to I prefer magic because it's slower and power creep isn't as prevalent because there's rotation, which is fair. Um, but I don't think that makes it somehow objectively better than Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But of, of course, I don't think he's going to be suggesting that this is objective, right? I mean, this is just one person's opinion. No, it's not objective. Of course, everything I put here in a thought piece that is about my opinion is my opinion, right? And I, I think I even say that later. Um, and I, it's not like I'm saying, oh, magic is objectively better or that because it has standard of rotation. It's... Bingo! I'm saying that there is a story that's being told, uh, being told in the artwork, and it very closely correlates to the text on the card, the mechanical text on the card, what the card is doing. I don't. It's not a preference on the speed or whatever. I I think yes. Yu-Gi-Oh clearly has so many cards that need to do so many things, and it just isn't able to have the amount of storytelling, the amount of flavor that is present in other card games. And that's okay. That's fine. You, that's obviously not your preference. That's mine. That's what I'm sharing. This is my opinion, right? Thanks for the follows, by the way, and everything. We're just going to be watching the video, though. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, you know, there's, uh, there's no power creep. About it. Okay, well, like, in the extent that there's, you know... It's controllable in theory. Uh, of Hearthstone, like I've seen. See, okay, I'm gonna go back really quick. Okay, well, Matt, okay. Well, like in the extent that there's, you know, it's controllable in. Pirelli is literally your cat grows according to how you treat him. Yes, it is. The archetype is, but the cards themselves don't really say anything, right? They don't really say much. Why um, does happiness search for the other memories? Why does beauty not do the same thing? Why can beauty negate effects on the field? Why doesn't the other ones? Why aren't the other ones able to do that? It doesn't. It's very mechanical. It's very just like this character. This character could just do it. That's. That, I mean, that's all. That's only. That's only what it is. It is what it is. And for me, that's like okay, sure. I guess cool. In theory. Uh, of Hearthstone, like, I've seen the power creep over years, like, some of the, you read some Jesus. of the modern Hearthstone cards, you're like, how is this thing ever created? Uh, I remember I read Ultimate Infestation for the first time a few years ago, that was the funniest experience ever. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, the point is, it's like, with a rotation format that's, like, controllable in Yu-Gi-Oh!, there's, like, no control over that, do you know what I mean? Really has much more powerfully expressed. If Yu-Gi-Oh! had rotation, we'd only be at Edison just now? Hell yeah, that's great. Which is fine, like, you know, if you prefer, like, entire formats just being totally rotated out that's okay but in Yu-Gi-Oh it's gonna be um that's one of the bad things about Yu-Gi-Oh per se that I think um 
I think something like a rotating format would be really good for the game, or at the very least, alternative formats. When and all of the different shapes and flavors we've expressed before, draft, uh, legacy mode, um, blah 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 blah. There's like a million different ways to make Yu-Gi-Oh fun outside of the current constructed standard format. Um, so it's the biggest downfall and pitfall of the game is that Yu-Gi-Oh has one way and one way to play only. If there isn't any other way to play, uh, cry about it. Although I will say this: I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh needs rotation. And I don't think it should have rotation. I think if Yu-Gi-Oh had rotation and it changed its design um, around rotation, then it would just cease to be Yu-Gi-Oh. I feel like now it's just come to a point where people like Yu-Gi-Oh for what it is. It's a modern, balls-to-the-wall, crazy-ass card game. Everything's going on a million miles per hour, and that's fine, right? I I don't think rotation works, Um in Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't think you can have it as a community format because the design of the cards do not match it. And I feel like design of the cards are are key to a successful rotating format because you can't just have cards that do a million things that are super strong and then have a why why do you have rotating then? What's the pur what's the purpose of rotation if you're not rotating out the convoluted cards that and and trying to keep the game fresh? And standard rotation, by the way, is not objectively good. Like, Magic the Gathering is not objectively better. People, plenty of people have problem with standard. It's not, like, the solution. It's just, that's how it is. And that is what lends Magic to be able to have more succinct card design in terms of art and mechanical flavor. And it's how Yu-Gi-Oh, for me, that, 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 total, that total aspect is, is lost. And it's super diminished so that's my feelings about that um and it's not like oh it ought to be a certain way that's just that's just not it's just what Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have and it's something i miss from other card games that's all it is although to be fair time wizard is getting a little bit popular now all of this is why i think Yu-Gi-Oh sucks now <laughs> clearly everything here and everything Jesus else I'm about to say is based purely on preference and my opinion poop, 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 i mean what else would it be everyone who you, continues to play the game clearly doesn't place as much importance or stock on these things as i do and that's completely fine i am only explaining my position and why i favor other card games vastly more than Yu-Gi-Oh. magic the gathering has powerful and succinct expression in its cards and i like the pacing of its limited formats lorcana has great original art and turns the competitive team hey bro there's no shot you're gonna come here and tell me that donald duck Attack for game has more fucking theme and flavor than Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? Ain't no shot I'm taking, like, lore <laughs> and, uh, you know, thematic uh, standards of cool cards when some little bro is going to tell me, like, yeah, Mickey Mouse effect, special summon fucking Donald, Dr uh, Donald Trump, Donald Duck, okay? Sh shut the fuck up, all right? Bro, come on, man. Like, I'm going to go Dreamborn Inc. and we're just going to look at fucking cards, all right? Look at this shit, okay? Let's say uh, this is the new set, so I'm not as familiar with the new set. Let me let me just filter this out uh, with like cards from the first, the very first set, okay? Give me one second here, all right? Look at Ariel, okay? <laughs> she, this is where she turns into a human. What I'm talking about is the flavor, okay? She turns into a human, and mechanically, um, the art is. The art, first of all, features her in the human form. And if you ever watch Little Mermaid, basically she's a mermaid, but when she turns into a human, it's at the cost of her voice. And she, therefore here, as a human in this form, cannot sing. Singing songs is really important in the Disney Lorcana game because it's basically casting spells for free. And that is an incredibly powerful effect. And this card is well-statted, it's great, but she cannot sing, right? Then you have Ariel, she's over here like singing obviously because she's under the fucking sea okay there that i don't want to talk so much about ariel here but like elsa frozen freeze characters pretty fast pretty easy it's it it makes sense right disney is for kids right yeah it is and he's obviously playing it up he's joking but like i feel like there's so much more that is being told with these cards there's so much being expressed with the art in these cards and they're all original by the way what's really cool about Lorcana is that it's not like fucking Weiss Schwartz it's not like uh like um other like cheap Japanese card oh One Piece TCG right um it's not like One Piece TCG or Weiss Schwartz in that they only have art featured from like they, they have art literally pulled from screenshots of the anime 
or manga. And that's like some some of the cards are just like that. And that's what it is. These are all just original art uh, artworks, art pieces by individual artists, uh, artists, artists, and they actually have the credit there. There's no credit in Yu-Gi-Oh art, but whatever. That, who cares about that, right? I'm saying here that there's a lot that is being told in each of these card arts, and that's what I'm saying. That that's the bulk of what I'm saying. This Mulan, by the way, is a Floodborne. Floodborne um, uh, sort of characters are basically the like alternate universe versions of these characters, um, fully realized in in like different ways, right? So, um, I I think that kind of expression is powerful, and I think it's prevalent in other card games. I think it's not there in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the gist of my point. TCG paradigm on its head by making a resource building game as opposed to a game that is focused on destroying the other player. Flesh and Blood is slowly overtaking all of them in my list of preference thanks to its flavorful card and game design, which revolves entirely around fantasy RPG classics. If you want something that's like adult and has really gritty card art, dude, just look at Flesh and Blood, okay? Look at uh, Uzuri. She's an assassin, so she's going to play assassination um, cards. And the card art for this is so good. Okay? Like, these are really gritty card designs that are very explicit and tell uh, a lot more of a story than any of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards I know. I love flesh and blood card design. Look at this shit. This shit is nasty. This shit is nasty as fuck. It's so good. And I that's just not there in, in Yu-Gi-Oh for me. This and their equipment. I can go I wish Yu-Gi-Oh cards had space for flavor text, honestly. It would be so cool. There's no flavor text in here, by the way. <laughs> it is what it is. What can you know, the problem is Yu-Gi-Oh fun fun fact, you know like per like square meter, square centimeter on a card? Yu-Gi-Oh has like the smallest space for card text. Like the box, like the area which you write the text. And By the way, okay, we're gonna we're gonna dick ride flesh and blood for a little bit. Okay, flesh and blood worlds. You guys love Yu-Gi-Oh. You guys love to be competitive. You love you love consistency. Check this out. Okay, world championship for flesh and blood. The pool of the prize pool is three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Or whatever the fuck this is. Pro play two thousand twenty. I think this is the entire season is one million dollars. The prize pool is $300,000 for the world championship, okay? People are playing it right now as... Or maybe it's just... No, it just ended, sorry. But people play this game super competitively. The funny thing is that there's not a lot of people that play this game. <laughs> this game is not nearly as popular as Yu-Gi-Oh! Absolutely not. And they're only just trying to fix this by um, making more casual... Uh, formats and casual ways to play the game and, and promoting that like uh, round the table with flesh and blood right F round the table flesh and blood is basically this really cool product where they give you four uh, blitz decks to play with you and your friends right they're only just now doing this and so there's not a lot of people that play this game that's uh, obviously I know that but you want to talk about like competitive card games and actually giving having an incentive to play these games at a professional at a high level. This is the game. Not fucking Yu-Gi-Oh where literally Yu-Gi-Oh prizing is a Nintendo fucking Switch. Your game has a failing console as its top prize. I don't know where I can find it over here, but it's there. Just saying. Great card game by the way. And Yu-Gi-Oh Yuga has the smallest like area of space for any card game, but it has the most text required to explain cards in any card game. It's like such a paradox. So you're never gonna have any space for like flavor text. Vanilla monster? Yeah, great. Yeah, sure. Those cards are viable. Check this out. Go on and on about how other <coughs> card games are so much better in my opinion, but I'll save it for another video. Time wizard formats, meaning that they represent a format that existed sometime in Yu-Gi-Oh's rich history, including what cards were available to them at the time. How those Look at this like massive potential and this huge just array of different game modes. Like you play, you know, um what's a deck that I really like from this kind of era? Like frog format, you know, barring the actual FTK, there was like a lot of like fun decks here. Um 
and like you play that and you play like 2020 like 19 or onwards and it's like it's a different game like you are not it's playing solely. the same card game like you play like airblade 2006 Yu Gi Oh, like you're playing like checkers <laughs> and then you play like salomon great today and it's just like you're playing call of duty it's a different fucking game completely different games um and that's the sad thing is like people don't get to experience these old school formats. Even like the dumb ones you'd think like are terrible, like Dino Rabbit, there would probably be enough people who enjoyed it. If Konami was to like create some sort of like tavern brawl system in Master Duel, where every week there would be like rotating like legacy formats that you can just jump in and play. That'd be sick. You know, that would be so fun if there was like But there it would also be hard to implement because uh Yu Gi Oh played in those formats is entirely different. There there's a lot of rule differences. So it just doesn't work. It will never work the same way unless for whatever reason Konami decides to really step their game up and just create entire different rules for these specific game formats. Like you can't play Edison no matter what. No matter what you do, you are not able to play Edison in Master Duel. You can craft all the cards you want. It doesn't matter. It's not about the cards. It's about how they used to work. Like... A dedicated rank time wizard edison ladder or there would be like you know weekly festivals or something but it would be like rotating between like oh this week we're gonna play 2007 this week we're gonna play 2015 this week we're gonna play 2002 like that would just like people would love master dope and it would be for all kinds of different players and people um to try that but yeah to be fair the best suggestion is literally anything would be cool because <laughs> you know master dope just has not really put in the time and effort to try and do something like that not even close Mm -hmm. Which cards worked and which cards were forbidden or limited. Goat format represents Yu-Gi-Oh! in April of 2005 and Edison represents Yu-Gi-Oh! in March of 2010. Edison is so popular that it was suggested to Raran, a Hearthstone content creator who originally wanted to give 10 hours and learn Yu-Gi-Oh! with Master Duel, then got so frustrated with the game that he quit early after 4. But what's the problem? Well, listen, okay, Raran, to be fair, does a lot of uh, things to himself here when it comes to, you know, the old uh, spindle bike wheel being a... Uh self uh you know guy falls over his own bike yeah you know, like uh, raran did a little bit of that but you know uh to be fair he tried edison he didn't even like it so i don't agree that raran like fucked his own experience i think he gave it a genuine shot i don't think he was going at it with bad intentions i think he pulled his chat to try and get a, a playable deck uh and he wanted to learn the deck and he wanted to play it uh he wanted to play it well and I think he, he gave it an earnest shot. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Raran's video and his journey in playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I think I've seen Firefuss take on it too, and I've, I've disagreed with it in the past, and I'm, I'm going to disagree with it again. I don't think, I don't think Raran did anything disingenuous. I don't think he fucked over his experience either. If Edison is so good. Like you just straight up just like fuck if, if fucking your experience over is literally just not playing with a friend, that's... That's dumb. I'm sorry. That's just stupid. That does, that's not valid. You're saying like, oh, you fucked your experience over because you didn't play with a friend or a tutor or someone to teach you. Like, what? You don't need to do that with any other game. Fundamentally didn't enjoy it. I'm not any other game, but what I'm saying is it's really bad with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, which is fair. A lot of people are going to experience that. Then only represents a previous format in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Why doesn't the community just play Edison in Master Duel? After all, Master Duel has all of the cards that Edison format uses since it's just using an older card pool. Except the shit. Well, the problem is that Edison and Goat format literally cannot be played in Master Duel. Edison and Goat format play with old Yu-Gi-Oh rules, which are significantly different to the rules of modern-day Yu-Gi-Oh. As well, several key cards have been officially reworded and nerfed from since then. Since Master Duel cannot- To be fair, the Sangan Arata will never come up in Goat format. ...be customized in any which way regarding ban lists, rule- I don't know. Maybe- probably not, actually, because the game isn't that fast. But- changes, rulings, or nerfs, it's not only impractical okay, this to card comes formats up. given the yeah. rarities of certain cards, but it is flat out impossible. Not only can you not play it any will. desirable... How is not being able to use the monster immediately with Sangan ever going to really matter in mass in, in GOAT format? Like, when has that ever actually came up? Shut up, chat. ...alternate game modes, but there's He's no effort right. from Konami to give you alternate formats to play. The only alternate formats that players can widely play are limited time events. Almost every deck has to pay the Max-C tax by including at least three copies of Max-C and three copies of Ash Blossom in their build, with other counter cards as a consideration. 
This will likely never change, given that these cards are max rarity cards in Master Duel, and thus it is a tax that practically all players will pay with their precious points that they use to craft cards, which obviously translates to revenue for Konami. On top of this, Eastern players whoa, are largely tolerant and Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Do we think that Maxi not being banned in Master Duel is a revenue thing? Because it's been around in OCG for years, and that's not a revenue thing, right? I don't know if that's like, I don't know if I would really say that that's based on money. I don't know. I'm not saying literally that uh, the only reasoning is money, but it's awfully convenient, right? They, you need to make these cards in order to play ma the only relevant game mode. Otherwise, you're just going to have a bad time, right? You're not playing on the same level. Nearly, if you don't have Max Senior deck or Ash Blossom, you're not playing at nearly the same level as anyone else. You're just not. Uh, unless you're playing like some other archetype that obviously is designed around it, whatever. But for the most part, you're not. And um, it makes, it does give them like more packs, more crystals, and that's more money. That's, that it, it is what it is. I don't know if that's true. Um, what do you mean pay? What is he talking about? Well, you have to, when you play Ma Master Duel... Because I'll, I'll also like... Be very clear with you, chat, right? Not everyone just plays this game free to play. This is a mobile game. Mobile games dwarf everything. Every other sort of like gaming like platform as far as like how big the player base is. And there is a lot of people in this world that pay money to play this game. I pay money to play this game because I you know, I'm a um I'm trying to make content, I'm trying to make videos, I'm trying to make uh, videos about new decks and and other things i'm trying to stream for you guys so i spend money on this game i have an incentive there but there are people who just the reason why i spend is because i don't want to grind i don't want to spend so much time just grinding and chipping away in the salt mines of konami and trying to like scrounge up any like precious little gem i i can it's like i, I don't want to waste my time and there are plenty of people who have way more money than they have time and those people are spending money on this game. That <laughs> it just happens. You craft Maxi, and Maxi costs you 90 UR, which you will have to do if you want to play uh, Master Duel even semi seriously. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, that is a tax that you get from your gems that you earn. And yes, it is. A, okay, now I'm just going to say, like, someone just said it right there. It is a, absolutely a revenue thing. Because think about, like, why? Why did this card get limited? Why, why did this card get limited? Why did Mathmec Diameter take the bullet for Mathmec Circular? Because Mathmec Circular is a UR. They don't want to give you free gems. They don't want to give you free crafting points. That's, that is what it is. Yes, this one got limited too, so you're going to get free gem points for this, but they're going to do everything they can to not hit the cards that are URs. That's the point. Because there is a financial incentive. Right? And? I mean, do you think a card printed in 2011 should be that monumental and pivotal in a card game in 2023? Like, and Giga Chad, I guess, but do you really think, like, listen, I'm not trying to sidetrack this discussion into, like, maxi good or bad. But do you think in principle it's right for a 12-year-old card that is literally capable of entering, like, is too old to enter Dragon Duels at this point almost? <laughs> is um, Should be such a fundamental, pivotal role in a game? Like, you think a card from that, that long ago should be that influential? I don't know. That just doesn't seem right to me. Port of, of Maxi's inclusion in the game. As it you has have to craft cards to play the game? There. No, the, the, oh my god, people are just missing the point here. It's not... I'm getting one guy. <laughs> it's not about... You have to craft card to play game. It's that you have to craft this specific card to have a, to 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 play any deck in the game. To just it's it's entering the arena. You have to instead of like going to like a concert and you hand in a ticket, you know, the ticket you hand in is three copies of Maxi. That's how you play Yu-Gi-Oh in 2023. You have to play Maxi. You know? A anyway, we're not doing this. No you don't join <laughs> the 7%. True. Exclusive physical format, the OCG which is separate from the Universal Master Duel format Get and the Western player's physical TCG formats. 
given how <coughs> necessary Maxi is to all players and its support from the player base that Konami has a bias towards, Maxi will very. I see we confirmed this is the second time Renu viewed the stream. I did watch the tail end, and I did mention that in the earlier. Very likely never be banned in Master Duel. Funny, I'm, of course, the funny thing is nobody knows who the fuck I am, so no one made a big deal or talked uh, about it while I was there. I was trying to just like, hey, what's up? But, uh. And remember how I said how Yu-Gi-Oh feels so binary? Well, Master Duel is worse because of Max C. Now, on top of the coin flip minigame that you so desperately want to win in a best of one format, you also have a huge portion of all of your games practically invalidated by this single card. Whether it's you using Maxi on your opponent and reaping an instant win, or your opponent unleashing it upon you, absolutely nobody is having fun. I can go on and on about- Wrong! 7% of the player base are having fun because they don't play it. <laughs> a master duel being bad. Okay. Not just for me, but for casual players as well casual match is a joke the fact that i can't set up a team battle in the lobby to have fun with friends is ridiculous bro the duel room is like so badly functional like i can't believe they haven't iterated upon this in like two years almost like the fact that you can't set up like in-game tournaments and stuff is like really sad not being able to implement a custom ban list for it's a lot of dumb and the fact that i can't enable a best of three op custom ban list would be insane option with side decking in a lobby is so mind-numbingly stupid and it's all indicative of what I hate the most about Master Duel, which is Konami's cold and utterly detached relationship it shares with the Western community. The community cannot hold Konami accountable to anything. It has only shown indifference in the face of any complaints. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is so wildly different than any other card game and has a strong brand identity with its anime, Konami has no reasonable fear that its player base may dramatically change from poaching or as a consequence from their decisions. In fact... Everyone's saying it's all just hard leg, whatever, right, in this chat. But the thing is, when have you ever seen Konami directly respond to any complaint? It's it's not there. I, this this was obviously the most obvious example. And there are plenty of Western players who have spoke out against Maxi, influential people too. And, you know, they don't, they don't care. They don't care. They don't need to care. Because they're going to buy their shit anyway. Fact. Major decisions, from their perspective, only pose a risk to lose players. Banning Maxi may please a lot of Western players, but how many new players will it create? How many Eastern players will they lose as a result of this decision? The trade-off is obvious. There is no reason for Konami to make any major changes when they are the sole kingpin that holds this specific brand of cardboard crack that its player base <laughs> is so fervently loyal to. Konami... You know that's probably like the best argument for Maxi is... um. Pretty much like the people who continue to play Yu-Gi-Oh! will play Yu-Gi-Oh! irrespective of Maxi. And the people who like Maxi, you risk losing as like a portion of your player base because banning Maxi means that they don't want to play the game anymore. Right? Whereas like Maxi existing is already like sort of preaching to the choir. Because it's been around for so long that if you still have a growing audience in OCG, then chances are, you know... You could you could risk that fundamental, amazing, money making, revenue generating formula that you have over there, and if you make such a drastic change like this, you risk losing that. But at the same time, you could definitely argue: what if? How many players could you potentially create and bring back to the game if you ban Maxi? Has no. I, I just said that though. <laughs> do you really think that there? If 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 you ban Maxi, do you really think so many people are going to be coming to this game in droves? This is always going to be a niche game within a niche genre. No one's going to be like, oh, finally they banned the roach? I'm going to play. <laughs> it's like, does anyone actually unironically think that? I think that's the silliest opinion you could have. And silly is a very kind word. No ambition to make Yu-Gi-Oh! appeal to a wider market because they know it's a horribly convoluted mess that's hard to teach, hard to watch, and that's literally why they made Rush Duel. Certain marketing moves, like their recent deck flexing series, gives me some hope for the future of the game, but the fact that it took a better part of two years for Konami to realize that Master Duel has the potential to appeal to a wider audience, Pulls and up, it chat. might be a really good idea for them to leverage their loyal and successful indie content creators to do that, it tells me that Konami is too slow to adapt, and that I can just go ahead and do myself a big favor of not playing the game until they decide to improve it, and so that's what I'll do. <laughs> As a content creator, Master Duel was absolutely my biggest break. I've met one of my closest friends in this space strictly because of Master Duel. Every time I turn on a Master Duel stream at my regular time, I can reasonably expect anywhere between 60 to 150 people to hop in. I'm not sure if many people can relate to how gratifying it feels for someone like me, an indie content creator that loves streaming, to have that expectation be met on a consistent basis. The point is, 
I stand to lose a lot. You could argue that I would service myself a lot better if I could just stop my feelings of the game from affecting my desire to make content. But I can't. The reality is that I hate this game. And I hate <laughs> more that I've convinced myself for so long that it's the only avenue that I have as a content creator. I've made guides for other games before that did very well, and I can do it again. I have made entertaining live stream content and shorts on this channel that did well, and I can do it again. It doesn't have to be for a game like Master Duel, and least of all does it have to be for a game that I actively hate. And if I can't do it again, then I would rather hang it up and call it quits. I'm done with lying to myself, and I'm done with streaming Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. To my viewers and supporters, you know oh, how it is. That's and fair. You, it's me. I am very appreciative of all the people that decided to follow, subscribe, join. I, like, that's in the end, like, you can't, like, you know, there's nothing to argue against that. Like, he just doesn't like the game. You know, that's, it is what it is. Oh, wow, you guys are really intelligent, by the way. We put a poll up here for Maxi, <laughs> and 75% of you think it's bad. This shit used to always be 50-50. I'm glad after almost two years that you Never guys Never see have a fake pen so real. <laughs> uh, that this card is actually bad and toxic. Great, awesome. On my Discord. That's and right, guys. You guys don't know, but I'm AI generated, actually. Bro has 60 viewers talking like he's Dunkin' Quitting League. The... Bro, dude, it's a personal take here, okay? It's about perspective. Just because he doesn't have, like, billions of viewers in the full-time content creator doesn't mean, like, their opinion isn't valid, you know? <laughs> like, obviously, this would be, like, a bigger deal if it was, like, a, you know, a huge content creator that yeah. was quitting the game and stuff like that. It would. Uh, you were one of them, idiot. No, I wasn't. Maxi was always bad for the game. Liar context of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, the opinion here is still very valid and real, you know? I mean, I even said it, right? I'm pretty sure that there isn't many people who could relate to that, because anyone who who are, who are is, like, saying, oh, like, he only had 650 viewers. Have you ever tried streaming? <laughs> Have you ever tried streaming? Have you ever tried, like, making videos? Have you ever tried making content? It's not... It's not like you get these viewers overnight. It's not like that comes easily. So the like 99.9% .9 of Twitch are sitting at zero one viewer. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for my experience and like having so many people in the chat and being able to stream. I, I will never be ungrateful for that. I, I will always cherish the time that I had with all these people because that that's, it's the most, it's the most that I've had with them. And I was able to speak and meet a lot of people because of it. And I, I enjoy that. I will never, I will never take that for granted. You can't, you, you will never convince me that this is something that's, that's worthless to me. Well, to have met all the people that I did Before meet while interacting apologist. in the space. I hope that I can I was indifferent. To interact and work with them. Not an apologist. That's, that's the key together term. In the future. So yeah, if this is where we part ways, you know, Hey, I understand. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, that was a, um, eye-opening video especially from uh, a content creator who was i guess for the better part of the last like year or so making exclusively Yu-Gi-Oh videos yep. uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh content live on stream um i think that there was a lot of valid um things that were brought up uh the main thing realistically like i feel like we've done this conversation to death now is that there's a lack of um alternative ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh as a game when Yu-Gi-Oh as a game has just an incredible amount of uh rich history uh different old school formats that are definitely super enjoyable uh, and super fun um but there's just no way to really enjoy and explore that too much in this modern age unfortunately uh and that's a big tragedy of Yu-Gi-Oh, is that it's just not appealing to um anyone outside of current constructed advanced format uh is the biggest takeaway um other i think okay let me let me get him to finish the stuff i think are, is definitely just wrong though like, there's some things you can say are, like, exclu like objective. Some things are subjective. Like, you know, in the end, like, it is a personal opinion piece, which is fair. Uh, I can't tell him he's wrong about certain things. But to say, like, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh! has no, like, theme or flair to its cards or that they're boring or whatever is extremely subjective. Sure. Um, but also, in some extent, objectively untrue. Like, the way that some Yu-Gi-Oh! cards are designed are very much designed in such a way that their mechanics and stuff are taken into consideration and in how they work. Uh, and that is definitely one of the cool things about some of the way that the the uh, the cards work in the game. Mechanical theming of archetypes are very strong. Mechanical flavor in individual cards for Yu-Gi-Oh are not nearly as strong as any other card games. I will die on that hill. But yeah, it is what it is. Oh seven, we've lost a soldier. We've lost another. How many more have to fall, Konami, before you address Maxi? At least <laughs> the easiest step for how many.
soldiers do we have to lose before Maxi is addressed? All right, peace out, good night, and uh, yep. All right, that's my reaction to that. That can probably go up on the highlight channel. That was very fun. Pug. Uh, I did. Um, what what did I want to say? Fuck. He was saying something, and I, I should have just marked what no, I was going to say. There's a lack of um, alternative ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh! as a game. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I definitely think that is... I think the, the most tragic thing... Um, the most tragic thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Is that it has a lot of potential. Right? The design space for the cards, as far as the artwork goes... Like, yeah, I don't think it, they are very expressive mechanically and um you know with flavor i don't think they're very expressive but they're still cool the art design is still good there are so many archetypes that appeal to so many different types of players um the game itself is fine like there there could be a version of Yu-Gi-Oh that is fun there have been versions of Yu-Gi-Oh where they it was really fun right uh, where I was playing, I don't have format library up, but whatever. Where I was playing Edison format, right? Um, there were plenty of times where Yu-Gi-Oh was genuinely just good and fun. And so it has a lot of potential. And it's just that Konami doesn't care to put it there. Like, they don't care to realize Yu-Gi-Oh and, and have it realize that potential, basically. And I think that's the... Personally, I think that's the saddest thing, but whatever. I mean, people like it. People are going to still play it, so it is what it is, right? All right, what are you guys saying? Your 150 viewers is somebody else's 5K. People don't understand the gauge for success is, isn't universal. It's not like... I, I know like when I wrote that sentence, when I wrote that in my script, like when you're watching someone like Farfar or MBT, obviously it seems small, but to anyone who actually does try and stream... I know at least to them it would relate and that I'm, you know, I would be giving up a lot. And that's, that's what I was trying to illustrate. I said, it, you know, a lot of people couldn't relate to it, which is fine. Yu-Gi-Oh is over 25 years old and there's still only one way to play the game that's supported. Traditional has been an official format since forever and Konami has done squat with it. Traditional sucks. <laughs> I'm just going to say traditional has no thought put into it. It's just a it's just a dumb legacy format to say like oh you could play any card you want. <laughs> it's, who cares? That's yeah, that's it. I, uh, this this was really funny to see, uh, especially after how long has it been since I posted that video? Two weeks ago. <laughs> it's been two weeks since I posted that video. I have not um, loaded up Master Duel for anything other than like screen capping um, for like Twitter posts or whatever and. Like, that's literally the only reason. I don't play... I, I, I've always I've always told you guys. I don't play this game off stream. There's a good reason why I don't play this game off stream. Because I think it fucking sucks. And that's just... That's how I feel. I'm sorry, but I'm not really. So. It is what it is. It was the best example I could think of because it's technically the oldest alternate format. Oh, I see. Yeah. I don't play it off screen either. <laughs> That's, uh, that's comforting to know. That's fun. Um, yeah, I just, I, I'm okay with not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! regularly. Um, again, if the fun events come up, if there are things that are worth checking out and whatever, if Engage goes to three, <laughs> whatever, right? Maybe, uh, Camellia, if Camellia comes out, that might be fun to check out, but yeah. It's whatever. I, I still think overall, in general, the game is, it is what it is, and it's not for me, you know. And that's fine. And it, it, it could be for you. That's totally, that's totally fine too.